Hello folks, happy holidays, how's it going? So welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1070 and indeed we did get another chapter this year and I know there's a lot of talk to come out of Jump Festa when it comes to Oda and One Piece but I'm going to touch into that by the end because I think it's going to be the end of this chapter it could be crucial to what to Oda's statement about the future of the One Piece manga going into 2023 and we got Arguably the most interesting cover story we've gotten in a while in this German 66 cover story And I have not said that in a few chapters, so this is actually cool We're getting a glimpse into Mads, the scientific group with Queen, Caesar Clown, Vagapunk and Judge And now that we know all of them, we've seen all of them in full design, Vagapunk the latest And we also found out that Dufel was also part of this or he had some connection because he had Mads written on the side of his ship. So, like I said, I could be a reference or he could literally be a part of this. We don't know. But to me, the most interesting thing is the girl in the background with the shotgun. We see every other scientist in that shot, but we don't get to see her. And I honestly feel that could be Stussy or somebody related to Stussy. Because Stussy knows a lot about... Vagapunk's Island, again, Island, so we need to get something clarified to that. I don't know if she's going to betray CP0. I really don't know. We start off the chapter with the way that ended, and I was kind of interesting of where Luffy would lie in terms of, like, would he regress into Gear 4 and get angry? Because he had an expression like, okay, he's concerned because that's the first time I've seen that look on Luffy's face in Gear 5th. Turns out he stayed in Gear 5th the rest of this fight. He did not regress. And I think, I think people can chalk it down as if, as this being a win for Luffy. So, and I also said that Setumaru wasn't going to go down that easily. In fact, he didn't even lose consciousness. Setumaru was actually still conscious after that attack from, from Rob Lucci, which is impressive. And obviously, Rob Lucci wants him, Setumaru, to lose consciousness because Setumaru is the o only one with the commands, the Zephyrums, and as we find out, that is going to be crucial in the next chapter, leading into the finale of this arc. So, Rob Lucci tries to go in again to try and finish off Sentimaru. Sentimaru, I will give credit, and I said this, the highlight in Sentimaru for a reason. Now, it only lasted two chapters, but I, I, do, I do appreciate the respect he has when it comes to, like, the hockey. He's, he was trying to defend himself, but Luffy comes in, and puts a stop to Rob Lucci's attack real quick. So he comes in with Gumma Gumma No Whip. And just launches launches himself and Rob Lucci away like the Tasmanian Devil. That's literally what this reminded me of. The Tasmanian Devil. Because Chopper, Chopper and Jinbei are running away in the opposite direction. And they notice, hey, we need to get away from here. Luffy needs to catch up. But they realize, Luffy's, Chopper realizes he's going in the opposite direction. So then you see the Zephyrims going into action, so that was pretty cool. You, we see Zephyrim Mihawk, we got Zephyrim Jinbei cutting loose. Then it cuts to Frankie uh, tearing up because he realizes one of the Zephyrim, or oh, the miniature version, the Zephyrim version of Jinbei has Send Your Pink's Devil Fruit, the Swim Swim Fruit. And we get an explanation as to why that is. So according to Vegapunk, like he took the DNA, it's a similar thing what Caesar Clown did, he took the DNA and implanted it into the Zephyrims. To put it simply, the only thing that sticks out to me in this scene is like Nami's nonchalant expression, like, oh, he should just die already. Like, she's already sick of Caesar Clown. But then we get description of the Paramecia type Dolphrut uses that if you get hold of the, the user's lineage factor, you can refine a special blood and administer which it will help acquire that user's ability. That is the blood flowing through their bodies, and they call it green blood. Now, the interesting thing here is Frankie's reaction. Like, he green blood, blood. So, we need to get more emphasis on that. Frankie had that reaction. Begs me to believe he knows something about that. So, we'll probably get some more information, which we probably need to, given it's the final saga. But I find it interesting. It cuts immediately to a Paramecia type user in. He shifts over to the Zephyrian Boa Hancock using the Maramaro Beam to put CP0 agents and turn them to stone. Then it cuts to the Zephyrian Lunarian Kuma doing the same thing causing damage with the Urusa Shark, which is pretty awesome. Which I kind of wonder what's going to happen when the original Kuma shows up. But Rabbit has the best quote of this entire thing like, they're a threat to us, the, the Zephyrians, pretty much. And Vegapunk caused them the strongest humans. But then all of a sudden, 
we see Rob Lucci and a hole of Luffy Gear 5th goes right through it because I lost control and obviously went through the wall. So we see Rob Lucci, he's his part. So he talk, tries to target Sentinel tomorrow again, but then Luffy, like the ultimate jump scare, comes out of nowhere, like, like in a theme park, and just tries to... Now this kind of shot me because he tried to literally eat Rob Lucci. He missed, but then L Lucci tries to recover and as he tr tries to counterattack, he uses arm and hockey. Luffy dodges it like a boss. And comes in with Goma Goma no rocket, which that was pretty intense. Like you can see the attack go right through Rob Lucci's stomach. It kind of reminds me of what he did to Kaido when his punch went straight through Kaido's face. And it's interesting because that's the last attack. Luffy is just laughing it up. And Luchi's just like, what the hell is this power? Then we see Bo Zafri and Boa Hancock lend their hand to Jinbei and Chopper, pointing them in the direction of the vacuum rocket. So get up. And then Jinbei actually tries to thank Z the Zafri and Boa Hancock. It's like, oh, you're way, you're way nicer than the original, which I think is a slight, considering... Now, she gets flustered and she says, you're being insolent because I'm just following orders, which I think the real reason she did it is because she was helping out Luffy. Because, as I mentioned, the, like the the copy, the Zephyrium version of Sentinel has memories of the original. Because he's obviously, he referred to that interaction back post-time skip. So, like I said, I, I mentioned that for a reason. Like, obviously the clones have to have the memories of the original. Or at least some type of emotions. If, if those in, in command don't, don't overwrite the chip, then I'm guessing the emotions belong to the original. So, obviously, Boa Hancock's desire to help out Luffy will be felt by the clone. So there you go. And there's a lot of people actually trying to point that out. Like, boy, I got, had a strange glare. Anyway, long story short, the end of the part, Luffy ends up turning into an old man again. But the main development here is Bonnie is actually awake again. So thank goodness that didn't last too much longer. So in 32 seconds, they end up to, into the lab. And by the end of this chapter, we, get, we actually get all the, we get Straw Hats minus two joining up again, which I said that was going to happen pretty soon. But then it looks like there's a cut because we see CPR Zero agents, but we see Rob Lucci's back in base and he's got a bandage on. So I don't know, you can chalk that up as a being a loss, which it would have been a loss anyway. So but I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen now because it looks like there's going to be CP Zero agents going against the Straw Hats plus probably Bonnie. But then there's a bit of a distrust when it comes to Nami and Usopp when it comes to like Vegapunk. Nami's like saying, oh, you'll be, a, you're just going to be dead weight. Let, eliminate him, but... Usopp's freaking out because Vegapunk is going to be a huge official ally for the Straw Hats when he's already affiliated with the government. So, it cuts to two separate panels of the Straw Hats. One is like Sanji, Usopp, Nami, Frankie, and Robin looking in, like debating whether or not to take Vegapunk with them, which Luffy already stated that he would take him off Vegapunk, especially after what said happened to the Zephyrian version of tomorrow like Luffy's not going to break that promise so that's that's pretty much set in stone and then the other panel which highlights Chopper, Frankie, Barney and Luffy on the opposite direction and Barney's like going up talking about going off on her own because she wants to kill Vegapunk for not restoring Kuma although we know Kuma's coming in which I'll get into in a minute and then we see a panel of CP0 agents, Stussy, Kaku and Rob Lucci leading the charge, and now the Zephyrums are under the control of CP0 since Sentamara has been taken out. But it it spices things up a little bit, and like I said, this is going to ultimately lead Barney teaming up with Luffy because Barney's going to be targeted as well. Lucci's like saying, "I won't let a single soul escape from this island." But Stussy already mentioned that they got orders from the Marines to not do anything, but. Lucci says if they wait any longer, they'll probably escape. Which, which Kizaru's got that pretty much covered because he's coming. He's coming in with a fleet of warships to like to cut off the exit of the Straw Hats when it comes to Egghead Island, and then get trying to get away from CP Zero. So that's how the chapter ends. Now I will say this: the fact that they showcased Kizaru coming in, threatening to bring up warships, that's not a surprise. We knew Kizaru was going to do something other than give the authority to attack. Luffy because he's a Yonkor now. So the th things to note here, they're going to need to get to the ship in order to escape. So that's going to be a trip in, in and on itself. So obviously the battle's going to take place to escape. Then we're going to get Kizuru coming with a fleet. Here's the thing, and this is where I think the statement from Oda may play a role. So I'll get into that. So we've got 
there's a bit of news when it comes to Jump Fest that when it comes to Oda, obviously highlighting One Piece Odyssey, which took six years in development, I, I believe. So that's pretty impressive. So that should be good. See how that game turns out and highlighting how successful of a year One Piece. I mean, true words have never been more spoken. This is obviously been one of the best years for one piece overall i would say if not the best year financially and just from a popularity standpoint and Oda made it a point to highlight the fact that oh even though we're entering the final saga you don't have to worry because the series isn't ending quite yet so he was very adamant about st stating that which i said this earlier in the year when we got that 25th anniversary interview from Oda when he said his aim is to end the series within the next three years not that that's what's going to happen, that's his aim. So there's a lot of factors to take in consideration here. So Oda again, don't, you don't have to worry, there's going to be a little bit of time before the end of the series, but we are in the final saga. But the main thing that people are jumping onto is the speech he gave about the future of the manga coming into to the new year, into 2023. So this is what I say. So this is what Oda says to finish off. Then he quotes, no way that person and that person are going to be fighting. That's the type of story you can expect. If I were to give it a title, I would call it a free-for-all battle. I hope nobody dies. So that's in quotation to that hit. That person versus that person. Now there's a lot, of, a lot of people speculating. This is why I wanted to wait until we got this chapter. Because it could mean a lot of things. But obviously the most popular theory is it could be referring to Blackbeard and Shanks possibly clashing in 2023. Now, now, before, Oda had Wano weighing him down, which we, took way too long when you consider how many plot points we had that did not need to be drawn out. Oda doesn't have that going into this year. So that's a plus. And the fact that he said, I hope nobody dies. So the last time Oda gave us a cryptic message at Jump First that he was referring to Sabo, Boa, Hangar, and BV, which we found out what happened to... Well, we don't know what happened to BV. We quote unquote so what happened to Sabo we don't know what's what how he's faring right now he could be dead he could be alive I personally think he's alive so we'll see pretty soon but we saw the blast from the quote unquote we don't know if that's an ancient weapon Imusama striking the Lucy kingdom off the face of the map so that was a race we don't know what happened to Sabo then there's VV we still don't we, don't, we know something happened we just don't know what and pretty much Zoro pretty much foreshadowed, like, we, the Strahs will bump into VV again following this arc. It's just a matter of when and how. And I think, I think Barney's going to play a huge role in that, like I said, because information about what happened at the Reverie, and she was going to spill the beans, but she said, you know what, I'm going to howl off on that. Now, that wasn't done by accident. That was done by design, because there's a lot of information he's going to spill out that possibly could involve VV. And obviously, we know what happened to Boa Hancock, although that turned out to be kind of a twist because considering Boa Hancock actually survived even though she had a clash with Blackbeard in this year which is crazy in itself that bad thing ended up happening to Kobe because we don't know what's going to happen to him he was taken off captured we don't know what he's what's happening to him at that point and the, that's the last time we got something cryptic when it comes to like Ora at Jump Festa saying oh gosh stuff is going to happen to those three and now we get something similar when I hope nobody dies when it comes to this Immortal Clash that's, which is about to go down the, next year. So I can't wait to see what that is. So obviously the number one guess is Blackbeard vs Shanks. To shake the foundation and the future of the series going forward in the final saga. Going by the ending of this chapter, okay? And given the fact we know now warships, multiple warships are on their way. Who's to say that another Admiral isn't going to make their way on one of those warships? Because to me, and this is something that I mentioned back in Wano, when he came to CP0, when Rob Lucci gave the order to kidnap Nico Robin, I said there and then, it was way too telegraphed, it wasn't done out of the cuff, they had a bit of, t they had a bit of time, and now they know CP0 is here, so the threat's not going to come from CP0, it's going to come from an Admiral, but the problem is, it's the same thing, we know there's a threat coming, and we also know Zoro and Brooke are on the sunny right now. Plus, back on Wano, when Green Ball came to Wano, we already had this. The, the, some of the Straw Hats with Observation Hockey already sensed that Green Ball was there. They were ready to jump in, but they saw how they saw how the Scabbards and Momonosuke and Yamato dealt with that. And then obviously Shanks came in. So yeah, I can simply see something similar with not Shanks, 
in this case i can see it with monkey d dragon because we know kuma's coming in he's gonna have a role with i said he's probably gonna sacrifice himself, sacrifice himself or do something to help out the straw hats and bonnie escape i think that's what's gonna happen like i said you have kizaru and kuma on the same island coming in i don't think that's a coincidence when you consider the last time that happened we got the time skip that followed when it comes to like Kuma separate the Straw Hats and then Luffy went off to go to Marineford but the Straw Hats ended up on their own separate ways and they've got the the two year time skip so I don't think there's going to be a time skip but I do think Kuma's going to have a role to get the Straw Hats away and possibly add Bonnie into the because it just makes the most sense now the question is what happens that if that doesn't happen then my other gut instinct is maybe Dragon shows up and maybe an Admiral not saying that's going to be Akainu, because that would be crazy. But maybe an Admiral could show up as well. It's like likely it's going to be Shanks and Blackbeard, but we don't really know for sure. Oda could, Oda could throw a curveball, and we wouldn't see it coming. So I think that's something to keep in mind here. I really do. Like I, I, If Kuma goes off, I, can, I can't see Dragon just leaving him there. I could do, see Dragon doing something next year. And if it's... If it listen, if it's Shanks versus Blackbeard, then two things. Number one, where it's not where is it going to happen, it's where is it going to happen? Because if it's, if it's happening next year, then that technically means we're going to have to get a conclusion to Law versus Blackbeard, which is currently going on right now. And in no way, shape, or form, it's Oda killing off Law. I don't care what anybody says. Oda is not killing off Law off screen unless we get a flashback. So that's not going to happen. And as I'm think, I think I've been thinking about this. What if that's what triggers the the fight? What if Shanks shows up because we don't know where he's heading? We he, we saw he left Wano, so maybe he bumps into Blackbeard, and maybe we do get a clash. Return a favor for for Law saving Luffy's life after Marineford. Because if you remember, Shanks showed up to put a stop to the war. Law and the Polar Tank to escape with Luffy. So I think that could play a role too. I would not be surprised. It's just a natural chemistry that Shanks and Blackbeard are inevitably going to clash, but it's like, where is it going to happen? That could be something to take in consideration here. I think if Law does get killed, is is who's going to get Law's double fruit if that ends up happening? So I, I, but I, I just find it very hard to see Oda killing off Law just like that. Talk about one of the most popular, if not one of the most popular non-straw hat character in this series in law. No, I don't I don't think he's getting killed off that easily. What do you guys think down in the comments below? What do you think this is leaning towards when it comes to like this inevitable clash, this legendary clash that's gonna shake the foundation of One Piece forever going forward? I can't wait to see what that is. It could be Blackbeard and Shanks, but I'm holding my reservations because considering what we got right now. And like I said in in last week's chapter i didn't expect the clash between luffy and luchi to go on much longer just because i didn't expect this to be a long arc anyway it's just a bunch of information we're getting about vagapunk and bonnie neither of them are dying this this soon we'll have to wait and see where that goes i don't know what's gonna happen now is luchi and luffy gonna clash again because they're threatening to seal all the exits this could lead into something very interesting when it comes to bonnie I said this is going to inevitably happen. They're not going to let... Luffy's not going to let Bonnie go and just kill off Vegapunk. We'll have to wait and see what role Bonnie has. I'm very curious about that. I'm very curious to see what happens with this potential alliance going forward. What do you think is going to happen by the end of Agatha Island? Who do you think is going to show up besides Kuma? And maybe even Zoro could step up and take on Kizaru. That'd be awesome. Brooks there too. So there's a lot of factors to take into consideration here going into the new year. And what a year of 2022 it's been for One Piece. My, my gosh. Like, not to rehash the rehash entire conversation I had in the last review, but my gosh. Talk about everything that's gone down this year. And we ain't even scratched the surface according to Oda. So that, it's going to be crazy going to the final saga. That's going to do it for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like the review if you do it. Thumbs up. I appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate all the support you've given to me this year. Thank you so much. Catch you guys in the new year for One Piece. Can't wait, 23 is going to be a massive year. I can't wait. Subscribe channel for more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.